We are going to get started. So again, thank you guys so much for coming. Um, this is CTA's, I want to say, first virtual tour. Um, we have not been, we were hoping to be in Missoula, um, as you know, so we are so, so thankful that we have Metro Bus in St. Cloud that was more than happy to share their facility with us and lead us on this virtual tour. So let's jump in. Welcome. My name is Taylor. I'm with CTAA and we are going to go ahead and get started. So uh, most of you have been with us all day. I'm sure you have this slide memorized by now. We are doing this in a meeting format. So um, at the end, we're going to hold a Q&A session. As you probably know, you were all muted upon entry. If you have a question and please feel free to use that chat box during the entire portion of the virtual tour. Um, answer, put that question in the chat box, make sure your name's attached to it. And I would, I will most likely call you out in order of the question. So I'll say, Taylor, um, do you mind talking a little bit about your question on the mobility tour? And um, you'll unmute and then we will talk directly with the Metro bus team. So this is just a rundown of what the next 30 minutes is gonna look like. We're gonna do a 10 minute tour of Metro Bus's Mobility Training Center. And then we have an opportunity where, for Q and A. So just so everybody knows, uh, Metro Bus is on the screen right here. We have Debbie, Cortez, Kim, Jerry, and Nate that were all able to join us. So thank you guys so much for being there and doing this tour and let's get started. Twin Cities metro area. We'll build the training center. Sorry, everyone. I'm going to go ahead. When I muted myself, I muted the video. So I'm going to start it over. Welcome to the Metro Bus Mobility Training Center located in scenic downtown St. Cloud, Minnesota. The Mobility Training Center is one of three Metro Bus facilities in the service area, which includes the cities of St. Cloud, Sock Rapids, Sartell, and Wayne Park. Metrobus offers 16 year-round fixed routes, connects on-demand ride service in the city of Sartell, and dial a ride paratransit service to residents of the area, as well as operating the North Star Link commuter bus service between St. Cloud and the Twin Cities metro area. The Mobility Training Center features a simulated street environment for training and assessing individuals' physical and cognitive abilities as they pertain to using public transportation. It is also home to our community outreach and travel training program which serves the general public, seniors, youth, individuals with disabilities, and non-English speaking individuals. The front desk at the Mobility Training Center is staffed from nine to three, Monday through Friday, for members of the public who may have questions about public transportation. The facility is also a training center to assist in determining the best means of transportation for an individual. Staff is available to answer questions about how to read schedules and put trips together deliver information on how to pay bus fares, and provide resources for navigating the system and travel training. The Mobility Training Center is one of the few facilities in the U.S. to offer these services in-house. The unique 1,500-foot assessment area is used to determine customers' physical abilities necessary when riding the bus. The bus is built to the same specifications as our fixed route buses. Individuals can practice boarding, sit to stand, and pulling the stop cord. There is an active fare box as well. Individuals using a mobility device can board and practice getting into the securement area. The simulated street environment provides many of the challenges customers face when riding fixed routes. It offers an uneven surface, grassy area, gravel, a six inch curb and curb cut, a four lane controlled crosswalk, and a pedestrian signal. The sloped walkways are examples of a path of travel one may have from their home to a bus stop. The course tests all the physical skills necessary when riding the bus. The Mobility Training Center is currently staffed by the Community Outreach and Mobility Department and also houses the Metro Bus Training and Safety Department. 
Debbie Anderson is the Community Outreach and Mobility Manager. Her department includes Community Outreach and Mobility Specialist Kim Hoff, Community Outreach and Mobility Specialist Jerry Duckworth, Community Outreach and Mobility Specialist Cortez Riley, Travel Trainer Sophia Hussein, and Travel Trainer Seneb Shire. In the early 2000s, Metrobus saw a continued increase in paratransit eligibility applications. And in 2008, our dial-a-ride application process changed. A federal new freedom grant helped to fund the staff needed. The Mobility Training Center was open to address the needs of the dial-a-ride program and to house the travel training department. The first step was to go from a paper dial-a-ride application process to all in-person interviews. As part of the application process, Individuals may be asked to participate in a cognitive or physical assessment. This new process allows for the best and most accurate consideration of an individual's travel skills and abilities. Initially, we outsourced the physical assessments, but we soon saw the need to bring them in-house. The first step in determining paratransit eligibility is to receive an application. If the application is requesting service only for a temporary time period, an interview is not needed unless a wheelchair evaluation needs to be done. Our front desk administrative personnel call the applicants to schedule their interview. If transportation is needed to come to the interview, we also schedule a free bus ride for their appointment. Depending on the applicant's disability, we may conduct either a cognitive or physical functional assessment at the time of the interview. Following the interview and assessment, there is sometimes a need for obtaining additional information from a medical professional. For cognitive assessments, we use the Functional Assessment of Cognitive Transit Skills, or FACTS assessment, which was developed in 1996 for Easter Seals Project Action. This assessment is conducted in the interview room with the use of a computer and also walking through the assessment area. When an applicant indicates on their application that they have a physical disability, a physical functional assessment may be conducted to assess their abilities to use fixed route bus service. Some of the areas that are assessed include being able to stand at a bus stop for up to 10 minutes, conducting a Tenetti gait and balance test, which would assess sitting and standing balance, rising from a sitting position, feet passing each other and clearing floor while walking, and the use of a walking or mobility aid. Other things that are assessed include the ability to use the stop calling system, navigating a variety of surfaces such as uneven sidewalks, hills, grassy surfaces, or loose dirt or gravel, being able to step up onto a curb or utilize curb cutouts, and the ability to cross an intersection with a stoplight within the allotted amount of time. Dial ride applications have remained relatively low even with the aging population and demographics of our community as we are seeing a majority of people contact us for travel training before they even apply for dial ride Metrobus also provides free travel training for individuals and groups within the community. We teach individuals how to use public transportation within the community. Our goal is to provide adequate training on how to successfully utilize public transportation within the St. Cloud Metrobus service area. In 2019, we participated in 840 travel trainings and travel trained 473 individuals. Referrals for travel training come from our monthly outreach groups, individual requests, dial ride applicants, and community partnership. We work closely with area agencies and support services, serving those with disabilities, low income, and seniors. Some individuals apply for our dial ride service and, depending on their eligibility decision, may choose to participate in our travel training program to learn how to ride the fixed route buses. For some trips, they may use dial ride, and for others, it may work for them to use fixed roads. Typical questions our travel trainers receive include, how much does it cost to ride the bus? Where and how do I get off the bus? How do I pay my fare? Do they take cash? How do I know what time the bus will come? How do I know I'm on the correct bus? Travel training is available to any and all individuals who are interested. Sometimes we have school districts bring their students from areas outside of our service area for training. Their communities may not offer public transportation, but they realize upon graduation, many of their students may rely on public transportation services. Often, it is their first introduction to riding public transportation. Each training is unique to the individual or group to meet their needs and abilities. Some trainings require one contact training and others as many as 12 trainings to assure the individual has the skills necessary to travel independently. 
Our first step is to meet with the individual to determine their abilities. Once a plan of travel has been determined, we look at the system map and explain what routes are needed for their trip. We review schedules and practice how to read them. Next, we meet at their home, walk to the nearest bus stop, and travel to a destination. We provide resources for the individual to assure they are safe and have what they need when riding the bus. These resources may include an emergency contact card for those who do not have a state ID, route information and times, or a picture book for non-English speaking individuals. Travel training provides independence, comfortability, understanding, and efficiency while riding public transportation. Metrobus staff also participate in many community outreach activities throughout the year. Our outreach staff provide resource tables, bus tours, and classroom style training. We meet monthly with nine transitional housing sites and provide them with information about how to ride the bus, use our various tools to operate the bus system, such as our trip planner, how to read our schedules, how to pay their fare, and how to navigate the system. For people who need more individualized training, we set up one-on-one -on -one or small group travel trainings. Metrobus has a great presence on the campuses of St. Cloud State University and the St. Cloud Technical and Community College. We provide resource tables in their public spaces throughout the school year. Staff also attends meetings of the student government and we do group travel trainings for new students, especially the students new to St. Cloud and our country. We also sit on the committees of the Family Homeless Prevention and Assistance Program, which seeks to prevent and eradicate homelessness, as well as assisting with the planning of the annual MLK breakfast at St. Cloud State. In 2019, we participated in 545 community outreach activities and share resources with 3,732 individuals interested in riding the bus. We work with over 70 community organizations, agencies, and support staff in developing local partnerships to enhance the travel training experience. And we participate on various committees that also provide referrals to our travel training program. Community outreach offers an opportunity for us to be involved with and offer our transportation resources to those who have never considered riding the bus or to those who need our services. We average more than 600 visitors per year at the Mobility Training Center. The facility has been well received by many support services and agencies, schools, transitional living sites, area committees and councils, and other systems looking to start such a program. Feel free to contact us with any further questions at the email, address, or phone number listed below. As you have seen, the Metrobus Mobility Training Center offers big impact with a small footprint. We hope this overview inspires others around the U.S. to find unique ways to meet the needs of their communities. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, so good. So good. Um, thank you guys so much for that. I mean, I can't, it's just so good. I really hope that you guys throw this on YouTube and share it every which way you can. Um, while we're waiting for some questions to come in, I thought that I would just get the ball rolling. And how, what inspired this? What, um, what led you guys to create this facility? And two, how did you get the funding for it? Like, what was your funding streams and all that good stuff? Uh, well, the facility, um, let's see, we, we started our travel training program in 2008. Um, and it was a combination of travel training together with our paratransit eligibility. Um, and we decided with our paratransit el eligibility process to to do in-person interviews with all applicants versus the paper interview. And with that being said, you need to conduct your cognitive or physical assessment depending on what an individual's disability is. So we started with that. We contracted um, out our physical assessments. Um, our travel training, we were all housed in our operations building. Um, and just the need for the program, we kind of outgrew our facility at operations um, as to where staff and I started looking for an outside place. Um, we worked together with the city of, of St. Cloud and um, Sauk Rapids and Sartell. Our commission kind of directed us towards the purchase of this facility here. The funding came through um, federal and local grants to, to build the building. Now we have upstairs is also completed and we rent the upstairs out to tenants. So that kind of helps offset some of the 
the um, operating expenses. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. We had another question come in. How has outreach been affected due to the pandemic? <laughs> well, <laughs> Jerry just asked me today, are, are we going to skew our numbers for the end of the year? <laughs> and uh, I said, no, we're going to make them up. But um, it's, it's been extremely quiet. Um, we've had to create you know, other avenues to get out and help those folks that, that need help with riding the bus or through our, our dial-a-ride, our paratransit. We've done some phone interviews um, because we still have to keep that process moving along. Uh, we are in the process of creating some virtual learning, but we now just within the last week or so have um, some of our, our transitional living sites have reached out and they are now allowing us to come back into the facilities, um, keeping our, our group size small, possibly meeting outside. Um, we're definitely oh, nice. practicing um, social distancing, wearing masks. Um, we're you know back out on the buses with with individuals as well. Awesome. We had a lot of questions coming in. Um, Jeff Hazen is wondering how much the facility cost. I believe it was one point two million, one point three million. Awesome. Now, I, what I want to um, quickly talk about, um, our facility is unique in that the, the footprint of our assessment area is 1,500 square feet. Um, we can't take all the credit for the design of this facility. We toured um, the Mobility Training Center out in Portland, Oregon. Um, their site in itself is 5,000 square feet. Um, we came back and when we were able to get into this building, just the architects themselves were able to design those skills and those, that assessment course to, to meet the needs of our program. So if you're thinking about doing something like this, um, we definitely would share what we were able to put into that 1,500 square feet. Um, very fortunate. We also have, we're sitting in our, our small conference room here. We also downstairs house our, uh, our employee training department, and there's a bigger conference room of, uh, that will hold 38 people. So, you know, we share our resources as well. That's amazing. Um, we had another question about your training. So how was the training developed, and do you change it every once in a while based on customer feedback? <laughs> our, our trainings are all unique. My, our trainers here have the cats have their tongue because they're all they're all very talkative normally. But um, <laughs> our trainers are our trainings are all unique to the individual. So depending on you know we work with our general public, senior, youth, individuals with disabilities, non English speaking individuals. So depending on what their needs are and their comfort of level with riding the bus. Um, sometimes we invite folks in and, and we can open up a map and, and do an overview of what our system is and how to read our schedules, put trips together. Um, other times, most often we go to that individual's house and we yep. walk to the nearest bus stop. We ride our bus to our transit center and we, we um, continue on to a destination of interest. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's we go out once or twice with somebody. Sometimes we'll work with an individual with a, an individual with a cognitive disability and we'll travel a destination train with them and we might have to go out nine, ten times until we test for independence. Um, we'll do some secret follows just to make sure in our car that they're getting off at the right stop and they're walking to work and not you know, going somewhere they shouldn't be going. But so everybody is unique um, as to until they're independent with travel. Yeah, and we also um we also like we have a lot of different tools that we use. Like I had this woman who um she didn't speak English, she spoke nothing but Spanish. And I can speak a little bit of Spanish, I was able to like take her on the bus and stuff like that. But what I did was I brought her back here and we have all these neat little videos in Spanish that um goes over all of our different programs and things like that. So I was able to sit here and literally just um, play those videos and play those videos and play those videos with her and um and you know they she didn't have any questions kind of thing. So we just literally tailor it to the uh, specific person and we just use whatever resources we have. That's awesome. And you guys actually brought this up. Um, 
was Jason Jones mentioned all of the surface simulations and what a great way that is for people to get a really accurate assessment of what's what's going on. Um, what is the kind of how are people transitioning from the center to you know using your services? Have you found that it's been pretty seamless, or what's been your guys' experience? Um, so based on our like community need, there's a lot of um, transitional housings out here or group homes out here. So a lot of those individuals may have um, dollar ride eligibility. And so they normally use those travel training programs to go to work or maybe to school, um, back in home, back to home, to a mom's house or anything like that. So normally after trainings, we'll normally do one training up to as many as they need until they get, get that full training. And so we also have a checklist that we use that lets us know that, hey, um, have they been taught how to use the fare? Have they been taught how to figure out which destinations are around where they want to get off the bus? And we kind of don't let them out that program until that we are comfortable enough to say that they can independently ride the uh, fixed route transit bus on their own um, without getting lost or in trouble or anything of that nature. That's awesome. Um, something else that you guys kind of touched on earlier, but I want to dive a little bit deeper is the architecture of the facility. So um, how did you work with, you know, the architect or the design firm to get the layout and the structures with the bus and the slopes? Um, can you kind of walk us through the actual design process? There um, is a list of skills that are needed uh, to demonstrate in order to utilize the fixed route bus. So those are FTA um, regulations that we drew from, all right? So that the slopes, um, those are what's required. We use our assessment area um, also for our paratransit um, determination for our dial-a-ride system. So when somebody comes in and applies for our dial-a-ride, um, they can be unconditional, meaning they use dial right all the time, but then based on a physical or, or cognitive assessment, um, they might be conditional for some of their rides. And that, that's where a lot of our, you, we've got the four lanes of traffic um, for pedestrian crossing. Are they able to cross the four lanes of traffic? The uneven surface, the six inch curb cut, is somebody able to you know, step out of the street and wait safely for the bus? If somebody's home, if, if they live and there's not a curb cut and they're in a wheelchair and they, they can't get up that six inch curb to wait for a fixed route bus, they wouldn't be safe when riding the fixed route. So then they would qualify for our paratransit for that trip. So those are the types of things that we use the assessment course for. And also just kind of going back to what you asked about with the architect, um, as Debbie mentioned, there's the items that we need to assess or that we need to um, utilize as far as the assessment course. And then when Debbie and I toured Portland, they had all of those things in their space too. Obviously it was a much bigger space, but we had gotten their layout and all of the things that they were using for assessing. And then we brought that back and showed it to our architect and said, okay, you need to take all of this and put it into our space. And they did a phenomenal job. Wow, that is so cool. Um, does anybody else have any questions for the Metro bus team? We'll wait a couple seconds. Um, I just, I still can't believe that video. We have some comments in here from uh, Scott at CTA and Jason Jones saying, you know, a really good tagline could be big impact and small footprint. So, I mean, your guys' facility is just incredible. Well, if there's no more questions, um, we will wrap up a little bit early. Here on the slide, as if you guys have been with us all day, these are our resources. We have a bi-weekly newsletter called Fastmail, a monthly member newsletter that goes out um, at the top of the month. We also have our blog, and I think this would be a very amazing blog piece. So as an aside, I will definitely be reaching back out to you, Nate, uh, to, to definitely get this up on our blog and talk to you a little bit more about this facility. And finally, we have a webpage dedicated just to our Sun members. So definitely keep checking that out. And uh, thank you.
Thank you so much, Ooh, Metro Bus. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Um, yeah, and we can't wait to hopefully see you guys all in person. So thank you all for coming, and thanks for this awesome presentation. Ooh. Well,